Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some community updates for you. We've got some announcements from Power BI's side of it too that are pretty cool. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. The Excel Club has a blog post looking at how and why to use dimensions and fact tables in your model. Now, this blog post is focused on Excel, but it easily translates to Power BI. The blog starts off explaining what dimensions and facts are, and then goes through a couple examples as to why you should be doing this. Most Excel users use something like VLOOKUP and just make one big table with all the rows, but they've got an example in this blog post looking at age and sale average items and calls out that the age, the average of the age is not correct. So if you're getting started with Excel modeling or Power BI desktop modeling, check out this blog post. Just a great reminder that you should be using a star schema and take a look at those dimensions and facts. Darian Gosbell's got a blog post looking at the Gantt custom visual inside of Power BI, looking at how do we actually capture events that are in progress right now. And you know it, he used DAX to actually help solve this problem, but the way he went about it was using DAX Studio to see what the queries were that the Gantt chart was actually sending, and then he could go back and create that DAX measure to accommodate what he was looking to solve. So pretty ingenious. If you didn't know, Darren Gosbell is also the author of DAX Studio, so that's pretty cool. So it's just a neat way to use the Gantt visual and to show tracking of events and timelines inside of that visual. So pro tip for those that are Power BI capacity admins, if you get that data set that's used for the premium capacity metrics app, look at those refresh times and maybe use a Gantt chart to actually show like when and how long those items lasted for. Just a pro tip. There was an announcement on the Power BI blog looking at updates to refreshes inside of the Power BI service. For a while, we've had the capability of using Kerberos SSO with direct query. I love Kerberos but now you can do it for refreshes as well instead of just direct query. This blog post goes through and shows you how you can do it. It is still bounded to the data sources that support Kerberos SSO, but like if you're using SQL Server or Oracle or something like that, this should work for you. The big benefit to this is that when you enable this, the username and password on the data source are grayed out, so it just uses whoever the owner of that data set is, passes that UPN down, and then goes to impersonate that on the gateway. So this means no more updating passwords and all of that stuff. It should just work because you know when you're using Kerberos, it just works, right? Comments are gonna blow up on that. Anyway, check out the blog post, take a look at it, and see if it will help you in your organization with dealing with refreshes and password credentials and data sources, all of that good stuff. We got an update to the homepage inside of Power BI, so now you can actually promote content into a featured area in the homepage. This is a tenant setting that should be configured by the Power BI admins. Maybe you can add just a security group for folks that can promote content in that featured area. The blog post even mentions, don't open this up to everybody because it could get cluttered really fast. So try to be mindful and targeted and look at like your center of excellence to decide what actually goes into this featured area. It's a nice addition to the homepage just to allow you to give it more of that personal touch for your organization. You've been able to embed Power BI reports into Microsoft Teams for a while now. There was an add-on where you could add a tab for a Power BI report, but it was pretty limited. There's a new announcement on the Power BI blog talking about the new updated Power BI tab for Microsoft Teams. In addition to Power BI reports, it also includes items or content published in Power BI apps, as well as paginated reports. It also works with any content sitting in the new V2 workspaces as well, or the new workspace experience. And it's been updated also just to give you a better feel and control for it and to have it be more of an actual integration with Teams instead of just like an iframe where it's just sitting there. So definitely check this out if you're using Microsoft Teams. Be sure to take advantage of this just in terms of data literacy within your organization and just to help build your data culture as a whole. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Maybe it was Kerberos. 
I don't know. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.